Hello everyone, it's me again. This time, I'll be doing a quick video on my study on Lyric's art, specifically this piece done for Ark Knight's Enfield of the character Hen Qianyu. As usual, I'm not professionally trained nor do I have any experience as an artist professionally, so what I say may be inaccurate. Anyways, let's begin. I start off my sketch beginning with the head as always. The brush is just a marker brush with a little bit of tapering and transparency to help keep things loose and moving. Definitely don't get caught detailing stuff too early, as the more things get placed onto the canvas, the easier it becomes to spot and fix mistakes. After just the first rough, I went straight into line art since I don't intend to make everything that accurate. The line art is then done using a G-Pen on just one layer with the exception of the eyes, which I always put on a different layer to help me detail it a bit more later. The G-Pen has no transparency, and lines are intentionally kept loose again to save some time since the focus is on the rendering. That being said, it still took around an hour and a half. For the colors, because of the loose line art, Paint Bucket 2 doesn't work as well anyways, so I just decided to take my time using the Lasso Fail tool. Each part has its own layer, and if you plan ahead, you can save some time by letting the lower layers spill into the upper ones. Also, instead of just picking colors directly from the reference like I usually do, I've decided to challenge myself to pick the colors by eye. Still, I wanted to give myself a little bit of a head start, so I allowed myself just these colors to work with. So from now on, every color I use will have to be picked from the color picker, and we'll see how that turned out at the end of the video. Next, because Ludic's style is more realistic and painting oriented than the usual cell shading we tend to see in anime art, I've decided to put more colors onto the canvas first for me to use later using the airbrush. As we get started on the rendering, to help you understand the rest of the video, I'll briefly explain the painting process, which is basically just these steps on repeat. First, I find the color I want to use. If it's not already on the canvas, I will pick it from the color picker, as is this case for the slightly more yellow shade on the hand. Or, I can also make use of the transparency of the marker to blend existing colors together and pick. Once I have the color, I will then brush it in, varying the number and strength of my brushstrokes depending on how much of the color I want. Messy areas tend to form due to how the marker overlaps itself, so I blur those out using a blur tool where I don't want any hard edges. Occasionally, it is the opposite. If I find the marker brush insufficient at creating the hard edges and sharp corners I want, I will use the G-Pen instead. I completed the face and skin first since it was the easiest. Nothing was too noteworthy except for the fact that there was a trend of more saturated and brighter colors on top. The shadow on the inner ties are rather grey, and the brightest color on it is still darker than the face. The parts under the skirt was also brighter than I expected, but likely it's because the skirt isn't completely opaque, which makes perfect sense but was also something I never considered when shading before. There are some weirder patches of color which I can't really explain, but I just chalk it up to it being a byproduct of their process. Next, I moved on to the hair which looks very involved and complicated. The resolution of the picture here is a little limiting, but if you look at it closely and just ignore all the hot edges, the area underneath looks like a gradient of a few different colors, which is what I first tried to set up. On top of it, I then started brushing each individual strand of hair using the marker brush, going from larger to smaller brush sizes, and picking from one region of color and brushing it into another. And in general, that's kind of it. You just need a lot of patience to go over each area and render it out. If I were to summarize the whole process though, it felt a lot like putting dark colors in light ones, and vice versa. It is this alternation of high contrasting colors that makes the hair look very detailed and intricate. So if you're drawing your own piece and find your hair rendering lacking, consider breaking up the shapes even more. Now, feel free to skip this part, but I'll leave a bit of the original recording here in real time so you can get a better perspective for what it's like as I render. Young me watched a lot of time lapses of pros who could render stuff out like this so quickly and precisely that I end up thinking that that is what art is, a simple process of walking a straight line from point A to point B. So when I tried it myself, my inevitable inability to perform similar acts of miracles often made me quit early. I didn't realize then that the ugly art that I was making was just part of the process, and that not quitting was the only way to turn it into something more beautiful and refined. So here's a short section as a nod to my old self. For the brighter regions, I brushed it in using the marker brush, blurred it out a bit, then used the marker again to break up the shapes. Some additional strands were also added in other areas according to the reference. The highlight was added using an add layer, and the color was just proud and arid based on the reference. The resolution of the reference wasn't quite enough for me to be sure, but it looked like there were some variations within the highlight, 
so I just decided to add another layer and play around with the opacity settings a bit. With the highlights added, the hair looked quite a bit better even though the rest of the rendering is nowhere near as polished as the original. Still, this kept my confidence up and I continued to render the rest of the hair in the same way. The horns followed and are pretty straightforward, just brushing the colors, pick a more saturated one for the core of it, then airbrush in some lighter colors on a glow dodge layer for that glow. Another minor thing was just that I had to use the G pen for some of the finer details. From here on out, it's still just the same process, pick color, brush, etc etc. So instead of repeating myself over and over, I'll instead focus on the more interesting areas for each part as the time lapse plays and reaches that point in time. I'm also not really working in any particular order, just the order of the layers I happen to have. So starting with this possibly leather made piece on the coat here. There was some writing as well as a checkered texture which I will have to create. To create the checkered pattern, I used the rectangle tool and by holding shift, created the perfect square. Then I repeatedly copied and tiled it, which briefly created this rather cursed scene. It is then applied using the multiply layer mode so that it affects all the painting I've already done on layers underneath, as well as using a clipping mask and airbrushing out the areas I don't want. On the left, I also see some lines, so I used the marker brush with this sort of pattern as the brush tip to put that in. As for the text, I looked around and found this Berlin Sans FB Demi font that was already in Clip Studio Paint. Then after everything is adjusted into place, I rasterized and added the correct shade of colors to match the lighting. The next thing are these brush strokes on the coat, which looks like a whole bunch of ovals stacked on top of one another. To replicate it, I quickly made an oval brush tip, applied it to my marker, and adjusted the gap setting of the stroke until it matches what I see. On the body, there's this exposed bit here which seems to have a little bit of a checkered pattern again. It was so small so I could have just painted it, but I thought that I could try the same thing I did with the squares but only this time with colored rectangles. I ended up using colors with more contrast than I needed so I had to turn it down. Then I warped it to fit the curvature and also applied the multiply layer on top to apply shadows since I cannot paint over it easily. Some rendering later, I also noticed some kind of pattern on the belt looking piece of clothing here. I wasn't sure but I just decided to use my marker brush with the line tip. By drawing a stroke in one direction then erasing it in another, you can sort of get this kind of dotted pattern that looks similar. For the arm areas, another thing I learned here was that shadows here were done using multiplier layers. Usually this would have been nothing worth noting since others might apply shadows exclusively using them. But hang on a second. Going into this study, I had the notion that artists with a more painterly style would sort of treat shadow colors just like any other color and paint them in directly instead of relying on layer effects, kinda like how you would do in traditional medium. But it is only as I'm editing the video do I realize that I actually missed a whole bunch of them during my study. By identifying certain shapes transiting between light and dark areas, I can now see that multiply layers have been used to apply shadows to quite a few areas including the skirt, glove, apron, this tiny accessory here, and probably even more. I was just so focused on painting things in that I end up being blind to all the obvious clues. This method would mean that I could have just painted the forms, then just applied the multiply layer for the drop shadow, which would have made things so much easier. So definitely a thing to keep in mind from now on. Tailwise, I got lazy and just decided to use a hexagonal grid to replace the scales I see in the original. So like before, copy, paste, and tile. Warping was also done to make it fit the curvature of the round, cylindrically shaped tail. After painting up all of the accessories, I realized that I had missed a portion of the top. Once again, I see some interesting textures that looked like a bunch of tic tacs, so I made that quickly, again put it on a layer with a clipping mask, then played around with the layer modes, eventually ending up on color dodge. For the eyes, I added a gradient first, before drawing in the details and adding a little bit of accent. The frame of the eyes contains some of the more saturated colors found in the illustration as accents as well. I also spent some time after that adding more details to the hair. Finally, to end things off, 
I added a background shadow, which is just a quick selection of everything, filling it in with a grey on a new layer, and applying some Gaussian blur. And that's the end of the study. Putting the two side by side, the first thing I noticed was a significant difference in its proportions. It isn't my focus this time, and looking at my own study on its own felt alright to me, so that was enough. Colors wise, I am so much more saturated. It might be the glare on my tablet from my room lights, or that it's rather old, or that I just like saturated colors. Regardless, it's an interesting thing to see and to keep in mind should I ever want to stay closer to the original. I've always admired artists who can use grays well, but while painting, it always just feels like there's not enough contrast. I guess this experience just empowers me to desaturate my color choices a little more. Quite a few areas also feel less polished than the original. Experience plays a large part I imagine, but in terms of actionable items, I feel like the hair could have been better with a little bit more patience and time. Some areas, especially the gloves, look sus because I'm copying rather than painting the forms since I didn't have a good understanding. Without having done any photo studies of the kind of folds that form up gloves, I was completely lost and just did my best impression of a copy machine. In general, I'm pretty satisfied with the result, but the biggest takeaway for me personally is not so much the way to render in a similar way, nor the final illustration, but rather just the experience of rendering something more complicated than I usually do. I don't think I would have been able to draw in this kind of a more complicated style without first doing a study where you have a perfect reference to guide you every step of the way. The 7.5 hours or so I spent rendering gave me a better understanding of how it feels to be painting, and the more of these longer studies I do, the more patient I seem to get with my own self to not be too critical and quit early. Anyways, I hope you found the video interesting and helpful, and perhaps even inspire you to challenge yourself to go further. As usual, if you have enjoyed my content, consider giving the channel a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.